Although my wife has helped me with grafting and also teaching grafting classes, she's never actually held the blade in her hand and done a graft herself. So today, we're passing the blade and we're gonna bring you guys along and you're gonna to get to watch her do her first graft. I'm definitely gonna need a glove. A couple years ago, we held a grafting class and we learned real quick that we needed gloves that whenever you're using a knife and the knife slips, you don't cut yourself. So we've got, we've got these uh, cut proof gloves. So I encourage anybody that's gonna be doing any grafting, wear something that's gonna prevent you from getting cut. And we got two different sizes. We've got one for ladies and then one for men. And then I have recently decided that I like this little thing here where it goes over just the one finger that while I'm holding the root stock and doing the graft, it's just this one finger that's at risk of getting cut. So I like wearing this and everything that I need to do in grafting, I can do. Okay, so today we've got a bundle of root stock over here and it happens to be G41, which is a really dwarfing root stock. We're gonna be grafting over apple. I've got a bag full of uh, shell of Alabama scions here that I've cut back in January, right in the middle of our, uh, our dead of winter. We've kept them in the refrigerator. And if you've never done grafting before, Essentially, we're taking a root stock that does very well in the dirt and resists diseases that are in the dirt. And we're grafting on, we're actually doing surgery. We're taking a fruiting variety of an apple that we'd like to eat and we're putting that onto that root system. So essentially that's what grafting is. So I, we stage our, our root stock here, we do our grafting here, and then we put it in that bin right there to hold it there until we can get ready to uh, then pot up. So I'm just gonna reach over here and grab a rootstock. And you see it's essentially a cutting that's been propagated at a nursery in a, uh, a, a hill of dirt and then roots have started to grow and then they dig it up and they send it to us. So we're gonna see what she knows from the things that we have, uh, we've done together as far as grafting. I've recently gotten this tool, a pair of grafting shears, and it makes um, a cut a lot easier. The style that, of grafting we're gonna do today is called um, uh, whip and tongue. So we're gonna be making our, our slant cuts with the grafting shears. Okay, so I'm gonna go in probably like right below this. Does that, or right, right here, right below this node. Yep. Okay, right below this node right here. We're going to be cutting that node out so that we get good straight wood to work with. I need this upside down. Your, not, your knife is upside down. My knife was upside down. So right here, that node, right? Yeah. Got to go just below it or above it? Uh, cut, the, cut the node out. Right here, right? Okay. All right. So then I toss that and then I take this contraption. I think it goes like, like so, like that. That's right. And then I'm gonna stick it right into this. There's a little groove little right groove there. Little groove right there. And I make sure that I get a good distance out and then I clamp it down. There. Yeah. So it looks like a little slant. All right. And then, so I need some rootstock now. Scion or scion wood. Let's choose a good one for you. I choose this one. Nice pencil size. I choose you. Okay. Do I have to cut the top off? Nope. All right. So I'm going to come in. I have to make sure all the nodes are facing up. So 
and come in. Oh, I don't use this, do I? I use this. So, I take this and... The buds are up. So they cut the that buds in. are all up, so I have to cut it from this end. And I want to go like this. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't want to cut a node, so I think I want to go right here. Yeah, that's, that looks good to me. And I got to get my thumb out of the way. Just don't cut your shirt. It's not as easy as... Okay. Cut that little end off. I asked you if we yeah. need to cut the end off. You said the top end. That's the bottom end. End is end. There. There we go. Okay. So now, I think I want to do this one first. If that's okay. This root stock. So thumbs together. I want to kind of. While she's making her cut, just want to say that if you put your thumbs together, and if that knife slips, being that your thumbs are touching, it helps stop that knife, and you don't just go right on into your finger. So that's a good ways down. Yep, that's a good tongue cut. Okay. So then I put that down, and I want to cut this. But I don't know, like this? No, nope, cut your tongue. Oh, oh, cut my tongue again. Okay. Thumbs together. And I lay the blade flat. And then I kind of go in. I think that's as deep as I got the last one. Mm -hmm. does, it, does that look okay to you? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So then I'm going to take... So what are we focusing on here? Oh, I want the cambium layers, which are these green, really green layers right there. And the green right next to the bark. I want those to match up. At so, least on one side. So I put it in there like so. And the middle matches up. I can slide this over just a little bit. There. That matches up perfectly. And that's in all the way. It actually matches up on both sides. So this should be a good graph. I don't know that we've uh, done a graph this whole series on both sides of <laughs> I know, right? Okay. So then next, we take a rubber band. I can take my glove off. So this part I've done many times. Take the rubber band, pull it tight. And I usually like to start right below the graph, whoops, because sometimes you can pull it right out. Oh, I started on the wrong end. Okay, this is how you do it. Make sure all the graphs are matching up. So I go just below the graft union so I can get the rubber band on there good. And then I go up. And I think Randall and I may do it differently. And I grab a hold of my graft and I come back. Because I have noticed that sometimes when I'm, if I don't do something like that and I just keep going up and up and up, I accidentally push it right out of where it's at. So I have to go back and redo it. You're checking your alignment, make sure it's not slipped. Yep. Everything's where. The graft is all in line, okay. but I missed that right there. And then when I get to a certain point, I just start twisting the rootstock. So what's the purpose of the rubber bands? It holds the graft union together. And it gives it a good seal on moisture, I think. Mm -hmm. So then I get two fingers in, wrap it around, 
stick it in between my two fingers right there, close them together, and pull my fingers out. And I take my thumb and I pinch it. So then I've got the, that's it. Put a label on it. And when we do our graphs, we always put what root stock. Yep, root stock, what type of scion wood. And then we've got this wax right here that we've melted. And I know this is a longer piece of scion wood. We can cut that a little bit so it... Okay. So where do you want to cut it? Leave like? three good buds and then cut. Right here? Is that good? Yeah, as long, yeah, I think so. Don't cut your hand, baby. Okay. All right. And then you take and dip it in the wax really quick. And it didn't go all the way completely over my rubber band. So what I like to do, Randall, I don't know if he does it or not, but I'll take a little extra piece of tape and I'll just go over and make sure that the rubber band has got a good seal on it. What type of tape is that? It's parafilm tape. Yeah, just wax tape. Just oh, wax yeah. tape. And then there you go. There's my, my graph. <laughs> Done. And then put it in the bucket and wait to be potted up. That's right. All right, so let's talk about some of the method that we have here. Like I said earlier, we've got a root stock here that's waiting to be grafted, and the roots have got topsoil over, a uh, potting soil over it. You can keep those roots um, nice and moist. You don't want to let your roots dry out while you're doing this whole process. We're inside the shed, sun's not beating down on us, so it's not drying out too quick. It's a night bree nice breezy day today. Too. Yeah, it's a great day for grafting. So we bring one over here and we leave the roots hanging over the bucket so that we're not getting a lot of dirt all over the place. We essentially try to do our graft here and then we get it all sealed up and then we put it in that bucket over there. And after we do about 25, it takes what, about less than 30 minutes for us together to do 25. Mm -hmm. We'll come along and we'll take some more of this potting soil and then we'll cover the roots up. Or we'll stop and we'll actually do all of our potting. I actually got some pots on order right now, so we can't do any more potting until our pots come either today or on Monday. It happens to be Saturday that we're filming this. So as soon as we get our pots in, we'll go ahead and pot up. This year, we chose to do, what well, I chose to do 400. She's been kind of agitated with me with all the grafting that has been going on this yeah, year. Yeah, because we could have been doing other things, yeah. We got a lot going on, and uh, grafting has really delved into a lot of our free time over the last three weeks. So we've kept them in the box, in the garage, covered up, and we will get a bundle and we'll graft, um, graft and then just leave the root stock in that in that box and it's held pretty well for the three weeks mm -hmm. that we've gotten it. I've been really happy with this series of root stock. Nice big heavy roots on all the root stocks. I think they're going to do well. Uh, we got different series of apples, we got different series of pears, that's what we've grafted. And we've got a few persimmon also that we're going to have to come back and start grafting on but the root stock's still dormant, it's not ready to do any grafting yet. <clears throat> so after we get all of our grafting done, we've got them in these cages over here. <clears throat> and we just kind of keep them in here and let that graft union start to callus over for at least a week, two weeks. Some of these have been in here for three weeks. So some of this is ready that I can notice a little bit of bud swell on the scions. And it's really starting to ramp up and getting ready to start pushing growth. We're going to move these outside into the same racking system but under the trees so that it's in complete shade and it may get a little dappled sunlight but it won't be much. That way it's exposed to the elements and then whenever it starts pushing that growth it's not a big shock to all those new leaves. And we'll put them over into partial shade then eventually out into full sun. And in about six weeks some of these will be ready to start uh, putting on nice growth. We'll know that the grafts have taken and then we can start selling some of these trees. Thank goodness. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy this little quick video of watching Michelle do her first graft. I have all the confidence <laughs> in the world that that graft is going to take. Yeah.
All right, we're going to give you guys an update on everything that um, that we got going on. Whatever graphs fail, we've got extra scion wood. We can come back and we can regraft um, again if it's not too late in the season. Like, subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, hit the share button and share it out on your social media. Remember, keep growing, keep, keep building, building, and always keep, keep adventuring. adventuring. And together, we're, we're Farmington famous. famous. We'll see you next time. Yay. Yay.